Bonjour, I'm Vivienne. Welcome to the beautiful Loire Valley of France, home to the world's most spectacular fairy tale castles. It is also the location of my home, a small neo Renaissance chateau, which I share with my husband, Simon, our daughter, Isabella, and whenever possible, friends and family. Join us this holiday season for lots of festive inspiration as we explore special destinations, see lavish decorations, cook special food, listen to magical music, decorate our own chateau, and of course, share plenty of chateau love. Welcome back everyone to Chateau Love, where we are showing you some wonderful inspirations this holiday season. And today we are at the extraordinary Chateau Gaillard in the Loire Valley. The chateau behind me, we have chosen to bring you to because it is famed for its extraordinary Christmas decorations, but also the history here is incredible. It was built in 1496 by Charles VIII when he returned from Italy, and it is known as the most Italian of the French chateau. It also is the first orangery here in France because Charles loved what the Italians were doing with their citrus fruit. And so he also brought 22 Italian artisans to create the chateau as well as the most famous gardener alive in the year 1500, Dom Pacello. This chateau was later owned by other royals, including Louis XII and Francois I, as we are not far from the Royal Chateau of Amboise and also Leonardo da Vinci's Chateau de Clolusse, which you may remember that we took you to with Stephanie and Philip from the Chateau Diaries just a few months ago. As you know, we love all things Italian. The French love all things Italian. The Italians love all things French. And we have a running debate this year about what we're going to serve with our Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve dinners. Will it be Prosecco or will it be Champagne? If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so you can join us for our upcoming New Year's special where we not only finally show you the Christmas decorations and preparations at our own little chateau, but also take you back to glorious Tuscany where we are joined by my sister plus Stephanie and her gang from La Lande as we debate Champagne or Prosecco. Prosecco. What do you think, sweetie? Sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the wisest choice, actually. You'll feel better in the morning if you choose sparkling no water. That is true. So, celebrating all things French and all things Italian, let's go into this magnificent chateau and be inspired. So, sweetie, what do you think of this place? It's really impressive. I like the garden. It's really impressive so far. Yeah, I can't wait to come back and bring everyone here with us in summer because the gardens here are just so beautiful. Yeah. And it is really impressive standing here. We're going to go into the orangery in just a second. Mm -hmm. But look, I just love the simple lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1496. Mm. Incredible. We have to be careful on these slippery steps. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I love this. I'm hoping we're going to get inspiration for our veranda at La Croix Boise. Here we are in December and we're in the orangery. Look at all these beautiful orange trees that actually have fruit on them. Well, I don't know if I want our veranda to be this full of trees, but maybe one or two. Maybe some citrus. Sure. It will be very chateau and also remind me of all of my favorite people back in Florida. So, 
while Simon deliberates how they keep their paths weed free, which is the bane of all chateau, I am admiring these gorgeous cypresses. And I'm hoping that the film quality is going to be okay because we are in really, really low light. It's a very dark day here today in Amboise, in the middle of winter. But those cypresses make us feel like we're in Tuscany. It's a troglodyte dwelling. Yeah. We live in here. Wow. Had, the, had the little fire going, be warm in here with us. Nice and cozy. Here we are in a cave. And I'm here with my caveman. Yep. That's you. And again, there's a bed stuck in the corner. <laughs> like all these places. It's a very sweet bed as well. It's gorgeous. It's so this is an incredible miniature recreation of the Chateau Gaillard and all of its grounds. And as you can see, it sits right against the cliffside and has these spectacular gardens. I promise to bring you all back here when everything's in bloom. We're entering the main part of the chateau. We are so captivated already by the lights in the courtyard. Everything has a lightness of touch. And even though the decorations are very elegant, they're also happy and whimsical. And it definitely lends a spirit of joy to this holiday season. After our hike up all of those stairs, we couldn't help but stop for a cup of tea in the delightful tea room where all of the products are made from the citrus fruits that come out of the orangery. And Simon was very excited to see all different types of marmalades. And there's even their very own orange liqueur. We have such a treat for you today. We are here with the owner of the Chateau Gaillard giving us a private tour of his incredible Christmas decorations. Thank you so much Thank for you, having yeah. us. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Show us your favorite things about your chateau and your decorations this year because you were telling me this is the first year you've decorated everything. It has been a challenge because decorating a chateau is a different story than dec decorating a house. It's bigger, uh, the roofs are, of course, different than a normal house. And how can you, uh, uh, let's say, uh, cover uh, and, and create a certain atmosphere? So we said, okay, let's start by just, you know, these uh, uh, amazing roofs and let's hang a lot of things down. Just like it would be planets yes. somehow, where inspiration is coming from the, the, the planets. So you, you, you just have to find where is Venus and where is Jupiter and where is Mars. Uh, and, and then the table, because the table is always the moment, uh, the most important moment of Christmas time. So it's, uh, uh, of course, all about oranges, because Chateau Gaillard is the first castle where uh, citrus trees and oranges have been grown up and acclimated in uh, France in 1500. So of course uh, the orange is always coming at the, at the, at the, at the foot of the, the, the pine tree. Uh, then of course it's all of gold because my wife loves gold <laughs> and so she decided to mix animals because she's very fond of animals and very fond of gold so you can find the inspiration everywhere of stars of pine trees or animals you have deers and uh, and at the end it creates an atmosphere which is uh, quite uh, let's say uh, festive yes i would say i would say it's magnificent and i share your wife's love of gold <laughs> At our house, there's there's a lot of gold also, and I think it's beautiful. All what's glittering uh, is a favorite uh, uh, target constantly. So we can go in the main room. Wonderful. Also. Let's go. We'll be just. Ah, your entrance hall. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Here we are in the Salon Louis XII. Louis XII was a very famous king and he brought with him a man, a monk. You can see him here. This mm. monk is uh, Don Pacello de Mercogliano. We all know Leonardo da Vinci. And Don Pacello de Mercogliano came uh, with these 22 artisans and founded here in Chateau Gaillard in France the first French Renaissance. So the man was uh, was very uh, king of gardens and he invented landscaping and uh, he was growing up uh, citrus also. Two my two favorite French kings. Uh, here you have uh, Max, uh, our lab, in uh, his uh, you know his, his dress of uh, Venetian Doge, and, and and then here uh, Kumi Kumi. Uh, his nickname is Kumi le Magnifique, uh -huh. and he's, uh, as we can see, a knight, uh, a Renaissance knight. And then you have the real ones, which are the French kings and queens, such as Diane de Poitiers. They were all, all owning Chateau Gaillard oh, wonderful. at this period of the Renaissance. Let's go uh, here. Here's a very interesting thing. That's an Archimboldo. Yes. Uh, the, Christian Dior uh, uh, asked in Ravello uh, a manufacturer to create two uh, pottery faience, mm -hmm. majolic, of uh, uh, the summer and the winter, uh, based on Archimboldo. The winter has been sold by Sotheby's in 1985. Yes. And we found last year in December uh, the, the, the summertime. The wow, summer. That's a unique fantastic. piece. Oh, how yeah. privileged we are to see yeah, this. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, wow. During the 16th century, Archimboldo is definitely the, the, the most inspiring artist of, uh, of his time. The great ballroom uh, from Charles VIII, the king. Uh, it has been entirely renovated, like the rest of the castle, the park, and the gardens. Uh, Twelve men have been working here for one year to entirely renovate, and now you can see this is a Christmas uh, a, a pine tree of four meters high, and uh, and the village for the for the kids, uh, which they love because it's uh, full of. Uh, Carousel, animation, animation merry-go-rounds, uh, church, and and lots of. When were you, you were a kid, you you had the, the snow globe. Yeah, the snow. <laughs> we have this collection which is quite cool. You see. Comment s'appelle en français? The Boule de Noël. Boule de Noël. The Boule de Neige. Boule de Neige. The, boule de neige. the ball of snow. Yeah. The snow globe. And it creates a, a, a cool atmosphere. The kids love that. Train. Uh, the the adults love town. this too. Yes. <laughs> yes the TV with the train, of course. So that's quite, that was quite fun because I, we had to think about it and say, what would we, would we like to find today, like we used to have when we were kids, yes. uh, at the level of, of a kid? The height mm -hmm. is not the same as us. So we said, okay, let's do a village, and, and they, they, they love it substantially. This is a long, a long word. It's almost two days to do it. But the, the, the more complex is this one. Ah, the, the crown, the crown is, is a three days work to to execute properly. It's exquisite. And you find again the story of the planet. You see, in this room. With the balls hanging from the ceiling. The balls hanging from the ceiling. It's so exactly. And what I really also love is that you've chosen the traditional colors. It's not. You know, a lot of people now, they go for all white or all something. It's very classic and also it's whimsical because um, I know at our house, because we've had a child grow up and everything, we like the little little cute things also, but it's not very, it's not the level of elegance, but a chateau is a home and it doesn't have to have that level of elegance all the time. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Christmas is about red, green yes. and gold. Yes. Uh, and, and, uh, one should not try to uh, to spoil that because this is what uh, what people and visitors do love mm -hmm. to see the the Christmas of the dream. Yeah, it, 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 the atmosphere has to be imagined. This is what we have been uh, also uh, setting up the music in the 
castle. Yeah. Because when you visit a castle, very often it's uh, calm, quiet. Mm. So all year long, we have music in the castle. Uh. Yeah. So Mark, you're so generous, you open your home to the public all year round. But this is definitely a home, looking around. So when the public goes, um, and I'm sure everybody wants to know this about private chateau, the ropes come away, and you and your family sit on these magnificent sofas. And uh, who sits next to the teddy bear? Me. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good looking I love spending spot. A, having a nap with the teddy bear. <laughs> this is the reason why you bought it. You know, we love it. And you know, yeah. reading a book, about cigars. Oh, <laughs> of course of it is. So it's you perfect. A, you both enjoy a nice cigar. It's from the 16th century, you know, and uh, we bought it in Venetia, in Venice. And, mm. uh, and what's incredible, it's a Bondol Bachic, yeah. which uh, arrives on the Piazza San Marco. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you can see here there is a, a ah, plate of oranges. The oranges. The oranges yeah. And so oranges are very, you know, oranges are not allowed to be uh, drawn or painted. Oh. Until the 17th century, I because this is the golden apple. Oh, okay. Ah. Okay. So the, the fruit défendu, you're mm. not allowed to to to, to paint, paint, to draw, or to represent the fruit défendu before the 17th century. Yeah. Basically, the Holland uh, painters yeah. started, and the school, the Holland school, started to really paint the oranges yeah. before yeah. very rare to find. Right. 19th century. Okay. So you will hardly find. So isn't that, isn't Almost that never. Yeah. The oranges before the 17th yeah, century. It's the, it's you kiss me, heaven sighs, and no one... I'd love to ask Mark about his unicorn. <laughs> oh, yeah. The story of the unicorn uh, is uh, starting with Anne de Bretagne. She was a queen, a French queen, and she basically was married three times. So, when she got married for the third time, she decided to, you know, have a symbol. And the, the, the unicorn uh, is a symbol of virtue. So this uh, virtue, uh, she tried to, uh, let's say, uh, enlighten, enhance, and protect her own uh, reputation by using this unicorn as a symbol. And you can see the unicorn in all uh, uh, blazons and, and everywhere. Uh, she did put uh, this uh, famous animal everywhere with the French ladies. Uh, this was uh, very common at the end because the kings were all having uh, and getting one animal as, uh, as let's say, a kind of symbol. So, uh, she, she, she had the unicorn, uh, Marie de Medicis had, for instance, another animal. And you've got the salamander as well. Salamander, so. also. Um, porcupine. Porcupine, porcupine. Yeah, yeah. It was the symbol of Louis the Twelfth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you know the pine of the porcupine can... Yeah. Can fire. Yeah, and yeah. reach you wherever you are. Yeah. As the king said, I can reach you wherever you are. Ah, that's <laughs> a great story. It's a great story. And, and of course, Simon's asking about the boats. Anything to do with sailing or history or both? We will have to come back another time and show everyone the gardens. Film those. And the interiors and the daylight because we are here to see the magic of Christmas at Chateau Gaillard, but we will definitely be back. An inspiration, and it's also uh, a little bit of magic. Yeah, it's one which has a, a real history. Yeah, that's nice. From uh, which uh, uh, the first Renaissance gardens, Don yeah. Pancello, the orange trees. Yeah. That, that 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 makes him it's particular because it's uh, it's a living castle yeah. uh, with a history. Yeah. Very often castles do not have histories. No, but now you're making your history here. Well. We, 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 you, you feel very quick that you are the kind of uh, guardian. Yeah. Yes. Nothing else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it exists before. It's the responsibility. Yes. Goes. So you, 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 you grow a little bit with the place. You help the place to, uh -huh. to, to pass from to go from one to the other yeah. owner, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's a moment. Uh, uh, that's an interesting uh, thing because it's a very different time than the economical, commercial, oh, sure. and, and, and yeah. time, no, you know, yeah. the, the, the time of the 21st yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, century, yeah. which is fast, yeah. quick, 
So a parcel has its really uh, own uh, rhythm. Yeah, yeah. So you have to adjust yourself to, to, to it. And the nature also. Yeah. Nature is very powerful. Yeah. And in years to come, people will be hearing about what you did here as yeah. well. So that's, yeah, part well. The, that's part of the, the, um, the responsibility. Yeah, the yeah, nature. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a responsibility and it's also a, a nice piece of creativity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, we really Beautiful. love you. what you've done so far and can't wait to see how it evolves. Yeah. And for anybody yeah. out there watching, as you can see, you get a very warm welcome at the Chateau Gaillard. <laughs> so as usual, it's never au revoir, just à bientôt. Thank you, Viviane. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> you kiss me heaven sighs And though I close my eyes I see la vie on me to your heart I'm in a world of